<laughs> That's why everybody's a drug addict. Because of Midsummer. Hey, Maniacs. Hey, Maniacs. Welcome to 2022. 2022. I'm sure it's going to be an amazing, super better year. At least I hope it is. Yeah. Fingers crossed, toes crossed, everything crossed. Let's hope Omicron doesn't eat our faces. I'm ready for Decepticon. That's the one I'm looking for. (laughs) It's Midsummer Maniacs. Midsummer Maniacs is a comedy recap podcast dedicated to the ITV series Midsummer Murders. Each week we dig into an episode of the show, including the murders, the mayhem, the loonies, and everything else we love. I'm Mark Bell. I'm Sarah Smith Robbins. Hey, thanks to everybody who showed up for the live stream before Christmas. That was so much fun. We hope you had a good time. We did. Hope you had a good holiday. Whatever uh, holiday you choose to celebrate, including New Year's. Hope you just had a little break. Yeah. Everybody needs a little break. <laughs> just pause the world for a day or two. Absolutely. Or two weeks or whatever it takes. <laughs> I'm a weird person. So as part of my end of year ritual, I review what I've done in the previous year. Oh, boy. <laughs> you guys don't know this. Mark has this whole to-do list sort of fetish. I don't even know how to describe it. You are so task goal list oriented. I think I'm a organized person. I'm on top of everything. Oh, I I'm totally a think you're organized. But I got nothing on you. <laughs> so the tool that I use has different levels that you can attain based on how much how many tasks you do. I have reached the highest level I could possibly attain in this yeah. application. You're so. one of those people who complete something, realize you didn't put it on your to-do list, and put it on your to-do list just so you can check it off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then well, I can stop worrying about it. Welcome to January. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so as part of my year in review, I looked at the podcast, of course, because that is primarily our main media outlet of yeah. the year. Yeah. We did 41 episodes in 2011. Okay. 2011. What am I talking about? I don't know. You were 10 years in the past. <laughs> 2021, we did 41 episodes and 10 mini episodes. So that's 51 episodes we yeah. prepped. Yeah. 51 episodes that we prepped and we did 83,000 downloads. Wow. More than 83,000. That's awesome. That's Absolutely awesome. And people in over 80 different countries. That's amazing. That the fact that we're... We're some, a global sensation. Somebody in the middle of Africa is listening to our <laughs> podcast is the strangest <laughs> thing. So then I went to YouTube <laughs> and looked at our YouTube stats. We did 65,000 views wow. on YouTube. And then the wildest stat, I think, of the whole of all the stats is... We have 5.4 thousand watch hours on YouTube this year. And if you take that as an eight hour day, it's more than two years of eight hour days every day. (laughs) That's more than a full time job for two years. (laughs) Oh, wow. Wow. Seven days a week. Yes, that's seven days a week. Eight hours a day, two years. You could listen to us. Yes. I'm so sorry, guys. (laughs) I think some of you have done that too. (laughs) We increased our subscribership in YouTube by over 400, which we still are not at the magic 1000, but we're getting close to it. Yeah. And then we have two over 200 people on our mailing list, which is fantastic. And the, the, so in marketing, there's a thing about how often your email list is open, right? Right. And generally, most people are happy to have 10% or less. When I'm teaching marketing classes, I tell my MBA students that if they get 15% open rates on their marketing emails, they're golden, like super golden. Yeah. And ours are in the 70s. That's awesome. (laughs) That's awesome. And we release four newsletters. Yeah. I think the newsletters have been a good thing and a great success. Thank you to all of you. The only thing I need to cover over from the holidays is that we're going to extend the the gift to Meals on Wheels to the end of January. Okay. So whatever's in November, December, and January, those three months, 
That's what we'll donate. That's what we'll donate. I'll put up a sale probably Monday or Tuesday on, on so the website. So on the third or the fourth of January. Yeah. Okay. And have a look. Have a look on my Instagram or Twitter for the show about sales because you know we just want to generate income for the meals and wheels. We don't people. make anything off that we don't. stuff. We're not. I'm not interested no. in making anything. No. So. Okay. Are you Episode ready? 110, which is, well, th- that's kind of the the big headline for the whole year. We have 22 episodes left after this episode. That's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Bentley Productions, churn some more out because which, I don't want to have to come up with new ideas. <laughs> uh, I, I think, let's see, let's see. Don't um, worry, we won't go anywhere after those 22. We'll, we'll cover some other things. We'll switch to being mystery mania. Yes. And we'll so go we back have to 22 episodes, no episodes left. Yeah. And we have only... 12 episodes before we get to where we started doing mini episodes. Wow. Well, we will have caught up with ourselves. We will have caught up with ourselves in the weirdest time (laughs) splicey (laughs) thing ever, which is going to be so weird because the first couple of mini episodes we did, we're kind of figuring it out. Mm -hmm. And we're also completely unaware of the pandemic (laughs) that is... (laughs) <laughs> heading towards us like a steam train. It's kind of weird to listen back to like, wow, we were oblivious. We just didn't know what was coming. So we will not only, I'll, I'll post those, uh, I'll post links to those mini episodes when we get yeah. there. But I'm going to re-listen to those mini episodes. We have to. Because we. I don't want to create double content. Right. But I, I, there's got to be questions we have about those episodes in those mini episodes that were like, oh, well, we got to dig into that now. <laughs> yeah, I guess we got to answer that question now. Uh oh. <laughs> but today we're talking about season 18, episode six, Harvest of Souls. This is yes. the last season 18 episode. It's the last Nelson episode and the last Sykes episode, which yes. we get no hint of at the end of no, this episode. No, I don't think. Either departure was expected at this point. Gwilym Lee goes on to do uh, Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody. Rhapsody, right? The Queen movie. So I found out an interesting thing about that Queen movie mm. and about Gwilym Lee in particular. Mm-hmm. So Gwilym Lee plays Brian May in the movie, mm-hmm. the guitar player, player for Queen. The clothes that he wears in the scene of Live Aid, which is a, a pivotal point yeah. in the movie. It is really... Queen, Freddie Mercury, and I would say more than anything, everybody at that point knew Freddie was sick, Mm -hmm. Freddie was gay, yeah, and it is a celebration of who Freddie is. Yeah, The clothes he's wearing in that scene are the same clothes he wore at Live Aid that Brian May wore. Oh, so he wore his real clothes. He wore his real clothes that he wore at Live Aid. I wonder if they washed them. I... Or if they still had the... The Brian May (laughs) phone It would help you get into character, you know, if you're a method actor. Yeah. Well, Brian May is a super <laughs> cool guy <laughs> yeah, already. Like, not only is he uh, the an amazing guitar player, he built that guitar with his father. The whole story of that guitar. Doesn't he have a PhD in physics or something like that? He has a like PhD that? in astrophysics. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> On top Because, you know, of being that. in the world's most famous rock band isn't enough for him. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so, this is a side road. We should get back to the main road, don't Back you think? to the main road. So, Gwilym Lee goes on to do that after this episode. Yes, and and poor, Sykes just retires. He retires. He doesn't die right away. No, he was, but he had been in a bunch of stuff. So yeah, including had, those commercials. He had earned his his retirement. So this is, uh, yeah, so this is the last season 18 episode. You got some viewer stats dates for us. You always do those. Yes. So broadcast on the 17th of February, 2016. That seems so recent. (laughs) Three years. I've got socks I bought in 2016. (laughs) Three years before the world shut down. Yeah. Uh, 5.6 million viewers, directed by Nick Laughlin and written by Caleb Ranson. It takes place in Whitcomb Mallet, which is weird. Yeah. So, Mallet. Yeah. What do you think of when you hear the word mallet? Bang, bang, like a hammer. Like a it's hammer. a mallet. Yeah, or a club, like a croquet mallet. Mm-hmm. It can also be an Australian tree. There's okay. a species of tree that only grows in Australia that's called a mallet. Okay. It could also mean a little bag. Okay. Like a a tiny little bag. Okay. 
or a kind of steam train, none of which makes sense. No. The no. O- now, there are real villages in England called Mallet, something yeah. Mallet. The only one I could find that had any origin for the word Mallet was that there was a family, M-A-L-E-T, but they were Norman, they were Malay, I'm sure. Yeah, right? if they're Norman, yeah. But there's a lot of geography between these places. It's not like they're all named after the same Malay family. I don't know why this is called Wickham Mallet. Yeah. If you know, let us know. And the pub's name is the Black Dog, which is not an aptly named pub. Why? Well, oh, no. because it's not relevant? It's not There's relevant no big dog or anything? There's no relevant. If there was a Hound the of the episode. Baskervilles or yeah, something, something, then they could they yeah. could do that. I don't know. Maybe it refers to the barman. Maybe. Being a black dog, meaning that he's not what he seems like. Possibly. Hmm. Hmm. We're in the middle of the Harvest Fair, F A Y R E. That makes it ye oldy harvesty fairy. Ye oldy. There, <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff here, including a chero plane, mm-hmm. which is like, that has to be your personal horrible carnival ride. It's the chair. It's You sit in this swing set thing and it spins it around and it brings you like 35 feet in the air and then brings you down and. All you can see is down. Yeah, I'm not really one for heights like yeah. that. Like, I, I will ride a roller coaster. Yeah. But I'm not going to go to the CN Tower or the Sears Tower and stand in one of those glass boxes that hangs out. No, no. Yeah. N- no. <laughs> it's not a Sarah thing. It's vomit-inducing just to think of it. I can't even stand when movies show off the edge of a bill. I'm like, Bruh! no, no, no. The whole fair that we see that is the center of this entire episode is a real fair run by Carter's Steam Fair. And yes. Carter's Steam Fair is this age-old It's run by the Carter family. They've been doing it for two or three generations. And they do like when you fix something up. Restoration. Thank you. They've been doing this for generations. And their specialty is the restoration of steam powered carnival rides. Yes. Which was a kind of 19th century thing. Yeah. So there would be one big steam engine that would power lots of different things kind of like what they used to do in a mill in the middle of a village they would have a big steam engine and it would have belts going all over the place yes and those belts would be powering the looms and you know other like combing machines and all that stuff all that but it would also be powering yeah it would be powering like uh you know a water pump for the village and you know i don't know a treadmill for grandma i don't (laughs) all kinds of stuff yeah and that's what these steam engines are like and i had i realized once i once it clicked to me that the carter's steam fair was a real thing i'm like where have i seen them before i know i've seen them before and where i had seen them before is on a british uh like not cash in the attic uh, but they're um architectural salvage people Mm -hmm. who go out and find stuff and buy it and then they fix it up and resell it and they went to the Carter Steam Fair warehouse and bought like some old signs and stuff from them. I remember that. I think they may have been on Midsummer before too. I didn't do a search for our notes, but the awesome thing about Carter Steam Fair, I mean, this is, this is an old company. They, they have been doing this for a long time. Right. And it's a family company, but of course COVID hit them super hard Yeah, because that's what they do. They travel around setting this thing up and you can, you can pay to have them come to your town and they do, you know, small things and, and big setups. But with COVID, they haven't been able to do that. So Joby Carter, who's the son of the founder, he and his wife kind of run it now, though his mother is still alive. He is a world famous sign painter. Oh. So all of the signs that you see on all of those rides. They're all done by him. He's painted them. Yeah. So he started online lettering classes. Oh, cool. During the pandemic. I need to find those because that's... They're awesome. That's, that's so you fantastic. can learn how to paint that kind of sign Yeah. from him. Oh, and that's cool. He also sells his, his original artwork on their website. Let's we'll just put say that. The, we'll put his YouTube stream <laughs> in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. But Definitely. really cool. Super Ano- cool. Another family that get me- gets mentioned here is the Dean Organ Builders, right? Yeah. So Michael Dean is... A, 
long history of building steam powered organs, music, as well as other musical instruments, including music boxes. They just do amazing, beautiful. De- yeah. When you think of the sound work. of the fair, yeah. that's what you're thinking that's of. That's a Dean organ. And screaming. Now, <laughs> other than the <laughs> people. The music. That's, yeah. That's there's a lot of screaming in this episode. <laughs> other than the people who are in this episode, carnies in England are a bit different than carnies in, in North America. Like carnies, they're still not you know, upper crust people. It's definitely a derogatory term here. It's a very derogatory term. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're trend. They're like people who are traditionally called gypsies. They move around, they deal in cash, Mm -hmm. slightly illegal. It's, it's kind of all that put together again. I think just the fact that there's a tradition of them setting up one place and then moving on sets up all kinds of possibilities for causing trouble and then taking off. Well, that, I think just the fact that they are nomadic like that throughout the season just makes it just allows people to be suspicious, though yeah. they've not done anything. You there's know? a Murdoch Mysteries episode where somebody dies on the carnival. I'm not going to tell you how. Yeah. And by the time they go to the carnival to investigate the murder, everything's gone. gone. (laughs) It's just gone. Yeah. Like something wicked this way comes, right? Yeah. So I love carnivals like this. I love that sort of atmosphere. It's always slightly removes inhibitions and allows for play. It's like Halloween in a day. Mm -hmm. Right. With candy. Which, yes, and I thought about maybe this is a Halloween episode because there's like kind of the weird haunted house part to this, but it's The not ghost really, train, yeah. but harvest time is, is fall. Is fall, right? So it's, yeah, but it's clearly not made and then. No, <laughs> no. All the trees are in bloom and, no. and everything. Did you have trouble with families in this episode i have drawn family trees all over the place trying to figure out who's related to whom so they're it's complicated it is complicated because there are crossover lanes right in in the family so there are two main families And, and apologies for getting this tedious stuff out of the way we promise there's some crazy there's the whim family wham 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 five yes which and is the, Jasper. Jasper. And his wife. His wife. And he, they have two children. And his wife is Serena. Yes. And they have Harry and Beth. Yes. And Harry is the first one to die. And then the other family is the Nevins family. And right. they're the Carney family. And that's Butch and Trina are the head of that family. Mm-hmm. And they have two sons, which are... Sean Sh- and Dale. Sean and Dale. And then there's... The Myers Coves, Clara, and her daughter Jessica, who was married to Harry. Yes, and they have a daughter named Amy. Amy. And then there's Niall and Rowena Dealey, who run the pub. That's everybody. Yes. Right there. And the secret is that Butch and Serena made a baby. Mm-hmm. And that baby was Neil. Niall. Yeah. Way back when. Way back when. I, that, I would pause it to you because we're going to I know we're going to talk about it, but I want to frame it up now okay. to see if I can prove prove this to be true and see if you agree with me that Butch is the best person in the episode. Best by meaning the most honest, the most straightforward, the most uh, sincere person. And Jasper is the worst. Ja- I think Jasper is completely responsible for everything that happens. Yep. Jasper is certainly the worst, other than Butch being unfaithful to his wife. Other than that, Mm -hmm. he's the best person. Mm, Okay. Yeah. That's not the best behavior. I give you that. Yeah. But short of, well, we're going to talk about his wife, though. Yes. (laughs) Oh, boy, are we ever. They must have a a, a wardrobe truck that is just, it just says country squire and squiress on the outside. And it's just full of tweety flat caps, quilted jackets. Khaki pants and riding pants yep. and wool sweaters. Because that's all Jasper. Because that's what you have to wear if you are the the country aristocrat landowner ass. Did you notice what was beside their house? Mm-mm. I noticed it. Every single shot I saw of the house as soon as I noticed it. What? There's a trampoline with gigantic balls in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, for Amy. Yeah. Yeah, I did notice that. I was like, that seems wildly out of place. Well, kids have stuff. Kids have stuff. I'm kind of glad to see it because Jasper probably doesn't approve of it. But Serena's like, there's a kid. Yeah. 
the kid needs toys. It's okay to have toys. I was like, that's weird. And then I see it. Then I became completely obsessed yeah, with it. Then it's it. just there all the time. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jasper was probably like, we should keep the child in the basement. Children. Jasper, who who is played by... Uh, He's played by uh, David Yelland, who you should know from Poirot. He plays George. He plays George Poirot's Poirot, manservant. And he play. He's in... Uh, isn't he in Agatha Raisin, too? Yeah. Yeah. But he was also in Chariots of Fire. Yes, he was. And he was in um, an earlier episode, Death and Dust. He plays James Kirkwood. So Harry uh, is is drinking the Midsummer Nectar. Yep. He's a little drunk, and then things get a little woozy, woozy, woo. Yep. And then he's shoved into one of the horse stalls, and there's this awesome combination of shots of carousel horse hooves going up and down and real horse hooves going up and down. Yep. While he is stomped to death no, i don't like carousels like i don't like those horses they they scare like they're scary really yeah they're kind of aggressive i don't like them in my notes it says well this is horrific mm -hmm. <laughs> but then there's blood on the hay there's blood on the horse's shins yeah it's a white horse they use a white horse for a reason yeah definitely so they can show the blood on its on its hooves and its shins it's not a good way to go now we find out later he had been dosed with ketamine and was gonna die regardless anyway, yeah but the killer shoots off a pistol in the barn to spook the horse so it will stomp him to death right which is extra mean yeah he was gonna die anyway yep but the killer wants it to look like the horse killed him yes I am amazed that Cam's team saw that bullet in the beam. Oh, that's incredibly lucky that they saw that bullet. I don't think it's lucky. I think it's impossible. Granted, it exposes some fresh wood so that kind of might catch your eye. Maybe. But it's a big old barn. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you be looking down, <laughs> not up? Now, and what would have worked it is if somebody in the house had heard a gunshot and came yes. running out. There's no reference to that. No. None. So Harry's dead. He's our first victim. He, and we find out he was an ass, right? He has inherited everything from his parents. They've kind of given control over to him. And of course, since they're lords of the manor, they're the local aristocrats. They actually own most of the land of the village. They, everybody in the village is their tenant and they have, Harry has decided that he's going to cancel all those leases take the whole village back and convert it into some hoity-toity uh, fancy place, including the village green. We have heard this plot before. We have. If you are an aristocrat in the UK and you own the tenancy of the village, don't try to go revoking that shit. They will kill you. They, they'll kill you. <laughs> you are going to get killed. <laughs> they have eventing horses. Do you know what eventing is? Is it for, what's the word for the fancy? Dressage? Sort of. It's really the equestrian triathlon. Oh. It, it, it comprises of show jumping, right? Yeah. Cross country, which is the most interesting race. If I'm an Olympics person. Mm -hmm. If you watch the Olympics, there is eventing in the Olympics for horses. And they have show jumping, which is like, oh, look, I jump over the poles things here, right? And they have dressage, which is a whole kind of weird fashion That's show. horse dancing. It's horse dancing. But the cross country race, that's interesting. It's like fox hunting. It's right? like fox hunting. It that comes kind of from running. fox hunting. Yeah. Right? So those three things make up eventing. But it's the jockey who gets the medal, not yes. the horse. It's the jockey that gets the medal. So Jessica and Harry had a nasty divorce, and his family, being moneyed, has run Jessica into the ground. Yeah, basically. what the hell did Jessica do? She it's only referred to in vagaries. This is what I think happened. I think they split up. I think the Wyams had a lot of money. I think they um, slandered her every way they could to get con to get custody of the kid and told some lies to make her seem nasty, which we know happens. And then she justifiably lost her shit. And, and then they would use that against her too. But okay, I, I admit all of that, okay? But if, if she was doing anything like long-term illegal drugs and was arrested or anything like that. No, I don't think she has like a criminal record of any sort. Because she wouldn't be allowed near that ketamine anywhere near. No, 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 no. I don't think she's a drug addict or anything. I think they, I think they split up. 
his family decided they were going to have custody of that kid because they should raise her because they're fancy pantsy people. Yeah. And then they did every nasty trick in the book against her. Well, they do have a trampoline with giant balls on it. Do you do nasty tricks on trampolines? <laughs> I guess. Oh, well, Woo-hoo. I didn't know that about you. Learn something every day. Um, hey now. And then she justifiably got really upset and probably acted out a little bit. And they use that against her too, which is really not cool. No. And... <laughs> To jump ahead a little bit, at the end of the episode, there is no sign that she's getting that little girl back. No. Like she screwed up. And I I think, you know, they they put the little girl in a police car. Now they have to do that because there's a court order, right? They have to honor the court order. That's not to say that it couldn't change. Police don't make the laws. No. They execute the laws. They just enforce them. But (laughs) I found this IMDB review for this episode okay. that I just love that references oh. this, okay. right? And I quote. So this is IMDB reviews with Sarah. Yes. I find it appalling that the episode ends with a child being pulled from the mother that she's been kept from for years, along with the mother sobbing as well. You're supposed to. Yeah. They presented this as, oh, well, that's how it should be. Our family structures continue to crumble, and we wonder why our children are growing up to be drug addicts. What? Okay, first of all, it is not portrayed as a happy, (laughs) this is how it's supposed to be thing. Yeah, no. There is a bittersweet (laughs) element to that, at the very least. But there's a cause and effect thing (laughs) here in this review that I think is a little spurious. Somebody mashed some keys there. (laughs) (laughs) That's why everybody's a drug addict. Because of Midsummer. Look what they do. Uh, Okay, maybe you should relax a little. I love the Nevins. I okay, know I love the Nevins. They're not too. perfect. I know that, but I love Butch. He has a great jacket. He My has, gosh, he has a great jacket. He has a great jacket, and he can pull it off. And uh, he's played by Michael Higgs. He looks like a kind of shifty Nick Lowe. He does, but then every every opportunity, except the cheating. Okay. British singing superstar Nick Lowe. We're going to put that to the side. Yep. With the exception of that, he is honorable. Yep. He is honest. He does the right thing. Yeah. Like when when Beth comes to see Dale and Jasper's like, (laughs) Butch says to Beth, you should go with your dad. Yeah. Like he's your dad. You should go with him. He's asking you to go with him. That's the right thing to do. Yep. He could have just as easily been like, she's staying here with us. You're a jerk, you know? Nope. Doesn't do that. Invite her in. Give her breakfast. Yeah. I mean. He is the Paul Larkin of this episode. Yeah. I I think they're trying to kind of set them up as like Romeo and Juliet, you know? Like the Nevins are from the wrong side of the tracks. They're trying to do so much in this episode and nothing ever gets completed. Well, but. In reality, if you ask the Wyams, everybody's from the wrong side of the tracks exactly. except them. Yeah, exactly. That's how <laughs> Ponzi works. <laughs> so they they run the Wall of Death. The Wall of Death. And the Ghost Train. Okay, so I did some searching into Wall of Death. Mm-hmm. Have you actually seen one of these things? No, not in real life. They are spectacular. It looks amazing. It does. I, I saw... In, in probably one of the foundational moments of my life, I went to the Calgary Stampede. And at this point in time, this is mid-80s. The Calgary Stampede is like a country and western fair, right? But it has a carnival aspect okay. to it, too. At this particular Calgary Stampede, I saw... I cannot believe I saw these things. I saw Wall of Death. Mm-hmm. I saw... I saw the thing that's like Wall of Death that spins that you that you get in. Oh yeah, and it spins a gravitron. A I've gravitron, ridden on one of those, right? But it was made of wood. Yeah, I saw an actual freak show. Whoa! At this thing, like what year would this have been? How like old would you mid eighties? Wow! I it so you was were a teenager, a very young teenager. Okay, like 13, 14. It was absolutely stunning. Wow! It was. I I saw. Were there living people in the freak show? There there were Or was it like Ripley's freak it, show? It was it was mostly like Ripley's, but I saw the the carny thing where they have the girl in the cage in the fur bikini, the lights go out, it's replaced by the guy in the gorilla suit. Whoa. I saw that. <laughs> That's amazing. There there and there's a James Bond where that happens. Yeah. Right? 
But yeah, I saw that in person as a kid. So when do you think the first one of these happened? The Wall of Death? Yeah. I'm going to guess early 1800s. 1911. Woo. First time they did this. Much later than I thought it would be. Yep. I guess you got to have reliable motorized. It started in Coney Island. Like yeah, so many I can great believe things. that. No problem. And then they made these kind of traveling ones, right? Coney Island was always wackadoodle. You know, they had an incubator show there. Yeah. There was the guy who invented incubators for babies. That's yeah. how he raised money to pay for them, was he put the premature babies in incubators on, at Coney Island. And anyone you've ever seen a freak show picture of, any traditional freak show performer? Yeah. Jim through, Rose, went all that. Through Coney, Coney Island. No, no, like in the entire history, yeah. they all went through yeah. Coney Island. There's a couple of different variations of this. There's a new one in that started in Saudi Arabia in 2003 that has cars. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of cool. Cool. Terrifying. Insane. I don't know. The, traditionally, they use Indian motorcycles for this. And then in March of Indian Indian meaning they're um, a smaller scale motorcycle. They're very minimal. Yep. They used them in World War II. Yep. I think in World War I too. So there's this guy in England named Guy Martin. Some of our uh, listeners might know him. He has the world record for speed in a wall of death. How fast do you think he got going in a wall of death in... On a motorcycle? On a motorcycle. 55 miles an hour. He was going 78 miles an what? hour. Around a specially built 37 meter diameter wall oh, of death. Oh, okay. That's so much bigger than yeah. this one. This so one is like bigger. 30 feet. Yep. In the episode. Especially made for this. They they now have ones that are like balls of death. Which oh, yeah. People go round and round. I've it's seen all those. It's like it's a sphere that they're on the inside of. So in the the article I read about walls of death, there's a mention of Hazel Marion Eaton, uh -huh. who turned out to be a gold mine of interest. This woman, okay, she lived 1895 to 1970. First of all, she saw the Everything. most amazing thing. Yeah. She was part of what was called the Mile a Minute Girls, which rode inner uh, Indian motorcycles at Carnival Motordromes. Which okay. would have been crazy Incl back then yep. that women were on motorcycles. This is when they were still like, I don't know if ladies should wear pants. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get bicycle face if you ride a bike. So you you <laughs> go through, right, the, the article and then little nuggets come out of nowhere. Hazel Marion Eaton was born the 4th of July, 1895. Of course she was born on the 4th of July. Of course. In the lighthouse tower of the West Queedy Head in Lubbock, Maine, where her father was the assistant lightkeeper. She's the only person born in this tower because the building that they lived in was being painted and her mother was nauseous. So she went to the tower to get away from the paint fumes and gave, gave birth. birth. <laughs> In the lighthouse. In the lighthouse. So, first paragraph of this woman's biography, born in a lighthouse. On the 4th of July. On the 4th of July. <laughs> she was destined for greatness. So, did amazing things, right? Wall of death, all sorts of amazing writing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Then we get to the last paragraph, which is usually, you know, had a bunch of kids and and died, died peacefully died at the in age Florida. of whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Died no. in Florida. No, Does no. everybody die in Florida? <laughs> she married a traveling circus auditor. Uh, together, they continue to... Wait a minute. Did you say auditor? Yes. A traveling circus auditor? Yes. Together, they continued to contract with circus troops until 1942. Okay. I'm like, okay, this is cool. Mm -hmm. The next sentence goes left really quickly. Beatrice Houdini... That is mom or a sister? His wife. Oh, became best friends with her while they wintered in Florida. And she was at the private seance in 1936, where they tried to contact Houdini for the first time after he died. Whoa. Yeah. Does she have a biography? Did she write an autobiography? I don't, I don't she know, but I, I, I want to know more about her because she's fantastic. Harry Houdini's wife died on the way to visit her. What's her name? Hazel? Her name is Hazel Marion Eaton. E-A-T-O-N? Yeah. You should link to her. She sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'll link to a Wikipedia page on her. And 
she so Houdini's wife died on the way to see her, and then she later on died in Florida for health reasons. <laughs> but in 1970, wow. this woman was alive when I was alive. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> A lot of people were alive while you've been alive. I know, but I think I think she's a woman who deserves to be known and deserves to have uh, like a plaque somewhere for her or Spe- something. We just keep going on side tangents. Speaking of amazing women, Betty White died oh. just a day ago, two days ago. She was an ass kicker. She was indeed. All right. So we've got the Nevins. We've got Butch and Trina and well, their you sons. Know, t- isn't it Trina who says... It's all arguing and no sex after the. Oh no, Bush says that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean and Dale and uh, Dale rides in the Wall of Death, and Sean runs the Ghost Train. Yes. Right. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. So Butch and Dale both ride at the same time. Yes. In that thing. Yes. It's one of those things. I don't know how you learn whether you're good at it or not. Like. It, th- the biggest skill must be just getting up on the wall because you go around that little rampy part until yep. you get enough speed. And then at some point you just got to go horizontal. And the first time you do that, you're like, okay, I can do that. Everything else is building on top of that. It's one of those things like, oh, I don't know, like tightrope walking mm-hmm. where you reach a point where failure becomes detrimental. Yeah. <laughs> like, Like learning to ride a unicycle, you go to a place where there's no traffic. Yeah. It has pavement or really short grass. Yeah. You wear some protective equipment. Get a a friend to help you balance for a bit. And yeah. You might skin a knee. You might, at worst, you fall and hit your You're not going to get run over by your own motorcycle. No. (laughs) Or fall off the motorcycle and then have the motorcycle fall off on top of you. Yeah. Or run you over. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's quite crazy. You know, how do you get to evil can evil levels? You do a lot of little jumps first. Yeah. I it's guess. like how do you learn ski jumping? That's what it's like. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because it, eventually you, you get to the big ramp. You watch the Olympics and you go, How did anyone learn how to do this? Why how did, did anyone even envision doing it, this? The first time. We, okay, we're gonna get you a ramp. We've got a challenge for you listeners related to the Nevins family's bikes. Yes. We've got a screenshot where Barnaby is talking to Butch and Butch is cleaning his spark plugs and he's kind of squatting behind his motorcycle. And there's some text on the motorcycle that is partially obscured and we think it's Dutch. So we think it's a URL. It's definitely a URL. Um, and it starts with D-E-S-T-E-I-L. And we think the next letter is W. But then at the end, it's dot N-L. So it's Dutch URL. Yep. We couldn't find it. We couldn't figure out why it would be on the bikes. And apparently... But that's not the weirdest thing on the bike. Well, but before that, when I tried to search for it, I kept getting all these warnings that maybe I was about to see some adult content, which I don't understand. Yeah. Um, so take, take a look at the image. We'll post it in the show notes. And, and if you know what that URL is, then... Uh, I should send a screenshot to Mark. You can you solve might the know. mystery for me. I have a Dutch friend named Mark. Yeah. So. Um, but the weirdest thing on the bike is... The in memoriam text on the top of it. Yeah. Somebody, Michael, somebody? Michael... Uh, They're definitely borrowed bikes. And there's a date. Yeah. It's weird. So I don't know what that's about. Can we talk about the ghost train? So the ghost train. So this is not the first time we've seen a ghost train. When did we see one before? Uh, the Brighton episode has a ghost train. The Sword of Glaim. Yes. Yes. It gets beheaded on the ghost on train the ride. On the ghost train ride. We talked about ghost train rides there. This one is called Terrorville, the final station. There's some wacky themed ghost trains out well, there. Well, yeah. There's a lot of Egyptian ones, a lot yeah. of like tomb of scary tootin yep. common guy <laughs> whatever. Scary tootin. <laughs> yeah. Scary tootin. But the the ride that got me wondering the most was the bumper cars. Yes. Which bumper cars are so familiar. I mean, you see them all the time. And I don't know why, but I never wondered how they worked until I saw them now. And I was like, how does that work? I really loved them as a kid. I thought they were super cool. Now, did you purposely try to run into people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so originally, bumper cars were called Dodgems. 
Dodgems. Okay. And the reason they were called Dodgems is they had this really wacky, jerky steering that was hard to control. So the goal was to not hit each other. Oh. It was really hard not to hit each other because you couldn't control it very well. And then they kind of flipped the idea and, and made the steering reliable and put big bumpers on them. And the Dodgem cars, you didn't want to hit each other because they weren't really built for impact. <laughs> the bumper car cars aren't really built for impact. Well, they're, they are now. They're pretty but, solid yeah. now. But the way they work, and if you've ever been on bumper cars, you might have noticed they have a long pole in the back with like a fin of metal that's kind of bent over and scrapes against the ceiling. Yep. And the way they work is the ceiling is like a metal cage kind of net thing. And it's positively charged. The floor is negatively charged. And the car closes the circuit and provides power to the motor so it can go. That seat must be insulated to high heaven yeah and there's like it's like a metal brush underneath that makes contact with the floor yeah because what if you reach out and touch the floor you're grounded yeah because you've got rubber touching it as yeah. well and you're in the car but the newer ones now have floors that are made of kind of like strips like mm -hmm. and the car is wide enough to be stretched across at least two strips and they alternate positive and negative oh okay and that m moves the car forward if you press the pedal yeah right but the reason why they're controlled that way rather than having like a, a battery or something is because you can shut them all off at the same time yeah boom they're done. Yeah. You stop. You get out. I was watching a bunch of videos about how bumper cars work and found a whole, a whole rabbit hole of videos about how people around the world ride them differently. Oh, okay. Because there's no rules. No. Right? There's no scoring or anything. In Japan, they never run into each other. They yeah. just drive around in a circle, and, and it's considered impolite to, to bump people if you can help it. From what I remember in Canada, we used to start in a circle, and then the first person, who was likely an American, <laughs> would run into somebody else, and then it was just chaos. And then all hell would break loose, because there's not enough room for a bunch of cars to go around if there's one in there sideways or going yeah. the opposite direction or whatever. And then the goal was just to run into each other. I don't know. I just thought it was funny. We're really going to talk about this episode, I promise. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have a very interesting death in the second death, so. Mm-hmm. Well, and the thing to know about the ghost train while we're talking about rides is that there's a lot of black light in ghost trains. So there's a lot of UV paint, fluorescent yeah. paint. Which is why he has it on him. Right. And apparently, Sean has to touch up that paint constantly. And he's got it all over him. Why you would need to touch up the paint in the ghost train all the time, I don't know. You might do it between seasons, but it's not like anybody's touching it. Like, it almost would be better if he ran into a wall that was just freshly painted and said, like, ghost across it or something. <laughs> in reverse. That would almost make sense. If Harry had ghost yeah. on his jacket. Yeah. <laughs> so our side plot is that the Barnabys are going to go on vacation. Yes. And why does he want to go on vacation? He hates his job. He hates his wife. He hates his dog. He hates his his child. He hates his vacation. What does he like? What are you talking about? Well, he, Barnaby likes his family. He likes his job. But he doesn't want to go to France. All the way to France. I don't know about that. It's about Sykes. Sykes can't go to the kennel. He gets yes. kicked out of one, yes. and the other one he runs away, from. <laughs> runs away from. So we get this stupid plot between Nelson and Cam being competitive about who's going to babysit Sykes, which just gets on my nerves. We're just going to leave it alone because he's gone after this episode. But I do think it's hilarious that Sykes gets excluded, which means expelled yes. from the kennel. <laughs> I can just imagine, you know, we check Olive into a kennel for a weekend and the doorbell rings and she's just sitting there. I'm back. See, she, it wouldn't be like that with her. With her, it would be like, we're, uh, Olive's not here anymore. <laughs> Where did she go? Olive's in the back of their car. Yeah. We're going to keep her now. Yep. They're supposed to be going to La Rochelle, France. Yes. La Rochelle, because I'm a Hoosier. That's yep. how I say it. Yep. Um, the vet's office. Yes. So Clara uh, Myerskoff is a vet. Uh, Clara is played by um, Mira Sial, which or Sal, I'm S Y A L. I'm going to butcher that. Yep. Um, she's been in all kinds of stuff. My she, favorite two roles of hers: she was in Broadchurch. She played the judge in Broadchurch, 
and she was in a couple of episodes of Doctor Who. Yeah. Uh, she was really good in Doctor Who. Wasn't she in Jekyll, too? Mm, I think so. Yeah. She's been in a lot of things, a lot yeah. of stuff. Um, but so she's the local vet, Clara is, and her daughter, Jessica, who has the restraining order against her, is like her vet tech. Did you see the incredible stained glass in that door in, to their house? Yeah, it's beautiful. I Their front door is gorgeous. I'm leaving my job and going to veterinary school. The front door that Nelson just walks in just and wanders walks around. walks in and wanders around. <laughs> but I'm like, I should, I'm in the wrong business. I should be in a business where we have beautiful stained glass windows. Well, if she's door. a vet for fancy horses, there's money in that. I love how he's like, I'll run you out of town. And she's like, oh, there's horses everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. I, I looked up some of the posters that are in the vet's office. They're real. Yeah. They're for real medications. Yeah. So, Because I, I was going to be impressed if they made fake vet med no, no, no. medicine that's posters. a real vet's office yeah so i thought that was going to be cool though i love nelson and his search posse showing up at the fair yes they show yeah. up at the at the Nevins and they're gonna trailer. go through everything yeah at the fair would you not shut down the fair immediately no maybe the certainly Nevins. after death number three <laughs> yeah <laughs> well and then the gun is in a towel underneath the ghost train. Where any child could find it. It's the worst place to hide it. Yep. But there it is. Jasper. We both know what happens to teenage girls who think they're in love. <laughs> you jerk face. You're just a jerk face. Jasper, through his jerk faceness and not passing on a letter, mm. screws everybody in this whole episode. Yeah. He kills a little girl. Yep. He causes three people to be killed in this episode. Yeah. And it's he all seems fault. to have no remorse about it. None. No. That's nope. what I thought we should do. That's what I did. It was the right thing. We didn't want any fuss. Yep. No fuss. Why do the stables have a stall at the fair? I don't know. They're not selling anything. And story-wise, <laughs> why are Jerry and Bush even having an affair like they don't need to no i don't think they need to she's the the lady at the pub right no 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 she's the the horse trainer yeah and like he could totally flirt with her and his wife go you know stop flirting or something like that to give him a bit of edge but their affair is just stupid it gives him an alibi but that's it no yeah yeah i mean it it does make her husband look a little shady in terms of the horse thefts yeah rod rod because rod and jerry run the stables and you know who rod is right uh, he's low rent little finger he does look like little finger He's low rent little finger. If these people haven't like, watched Game of Thrones, they don't know what we're talking about. Like if you can't guy, <laughs> if you can't get the guy who played Littlefinger, you get, get get that guy. But I just don't understand why they have that. Why why would you waste your time standing at a stall to go, we've got stables. Yep. They're here in town, but you already know that. Look, here's pictures of horses. You're here's from a saddle. Here. Yeah. Yep. This is what a saddle looks like. This is the point in my notes where I said is there actually a harvest of souls in this episode? Is there a harvest of anything in this episode? No. Kids? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Rod and, well, Rod helps, but it's really Dale who steals. Dale and some posse steal five horses from the stables, and their intent is to get them into the woods and then out of the woods and out of the village. Literally worst horse wrestlers ever. Yeah, but they can't. And they steal ketamine from the vet's office to dope up the horses, I guess. Yeah. Is their intent. And so they get they they break into the vet's office and and ram ransack everything, make a big mess. It just is too obvious that that's where the ketamine would come from. I mean, where else would it be in town? The vet's office is the only place where you could find it. I mean, it's just kind of yeah, but it does kind of date this episode a little bit because now ketamine is like a dangerous street drug. It's not yeah. a horse tranquilizer. No. That's not how people know about ketamine anymore, which is yeah. un unfortunate that that's happened. But it kind of changes that a little bit. And then Claire is killed in a horse sauna. Before we have the horse sauna, is is the weird silencer shot before that? Um, I don't know, but we can talk about it now. Okay, so there's a weird scene that's not referred to any other part of the episode nope where some killer we, we assume it's nile assume it's nile takes a handgun maybe this is where he gets rid of the handgun after this no 
Because there's a silencer on this gun. He puts a silencer on the gun, which is, okay. Nigh silencer, impossible to get a hold of, first yeah, of all. They're very the hard to get a hold of, especially in the UK. And then clearly points out, <laughs> like, you're at the wall of death and you see a black gloved hand and a silencer. I'm going to say something. Yeah. God. And now, then, I don't doubt that he could shoot him without anybody hearing it. Because a silencer doesn't actually silence a gun, but it does deaden it quite a bit. And those motorcycles are loud. Could he hit him? It would be quite the shot. You'd have to wait for him to slow down a little bit. You would. You would. Is he trying to shoot Butch or Dale? I don't know. Well, he kills Dale because he's... I assume it's Dale. Yeah, I'm assuming it's Dale. But then that's never referenced again. Nope. nope. Never referenced again. And the guy turns on the light. I'm like, why was that light on in the first place? <laughs> And that scares him off. He's like, yeah. oh, no, the light guy's here. I got to go. But then Clara is hit with a cattle prod. Why would they have a cattle prod on the sta- in the stable? They would not use a well, cattle no, prod on a horse. It's not in the stable. It's at the vet's office. Oh, well, I guess she might have one then. Yeah. And then she gets put in the horse sauna. <laughs> The hot tub for horses. The horse hot tub of death yes. is what I have in my notes. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's therapeutic. It's water therapy for horses. It takes weight off of them while you can exercise them a little bit or whatever. But it's a weird place to die. I wanted to know, and I don't know this. We should have researched this. If you're unconscious and you are in a pool that gets filled up. Do you wake up? Do you wake up? Do you, you don't sink? Because you have air in your lungs. When you're unconscious, you're still breathing. Yeah. I think it depends would, how deep under you are. You would float to the top. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you don't get waterlogged and then sink. As soon as your clothes get wet. No. It, you're going to sink. I think it would still be difficult. Or, you know, the bubbles might flip you over. Maybe. If you got the jacuzzi setting on. <laughs> that should be the last <laughs> shot of him putting the, pressing the jacuzzi yeah. button. Jets button. <laughs> and then Claire's face down in the water. It's a bad way to die. It's a bad way to die to me because it's like, hey, let's do a midsummer death. Uh, kind of. Yeah, I mean, it's a weird way, but it's not a... It's not the weirdest way. You know, it's not a dryer or a wheel of cheese. No, it's not even the weirdest way in the episode. No. The weirdest way in the episode is a bit of humbug where it's like, oh, he got stuck with a pole. How? Never mind. He got stuck. Run right through. Yeah, it's too dangerous to try to film that death. Yeah. They couldn't They couldn't do it. How did that even happen? I'm guessing when Dale got killed that we're supposed to believe that he was practicing. He was zooming around super fast and Niall somehow snuck in, which you couldn't do, by the way, because the door would have to be closed for yes. him to be going around. around. So he must have dropped down from the sky, missing Dale on the motorcycle. This is why we don't get to see a reenactment. Sticking it into him. And then stand. Covered with and, blood. Yeah, and then stand there with the pole like a jouster and let him run into it because he couldn't dodge it which would probably simultaneously shove it back at Nile. really it should be dale nile shish kebab <laughs> with blood everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> they should be impi- impaled on opposite ends of that pole that's why we didn't see it because the writers went just, we can't really show that yeah <laughs> the point is he's dead and two things i'm obsessed with <laughs> Why did the Barnabys have the broccoli in the middle of their table where <laughs> neither of them can reach it? <laughs> I'm like, why is the broccoli there? <laughs> well, you make this beautiful big bowl of broccoli. First of all, that's way too much broccoli for two people. <laughs> like, that's a week's worth of broccoli. Maybe it's their main course. Broccoli. I don't know. But it's in the middle of the table, and they're way at the end. Yeah. I'm just always amazed in TV shows that parents, especially parents who both have careers, work full time, who have any number of children, even just one child of that age, are able to still have dinner with candles and a glass of wine on a weeknight. Yeah. it's In reality, it's leftover Kool-Aid, cold chicken nuggets, while you rock the, fries, while you or, rock the kid, they seem to let Betty have the the roam of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Betty's upstairs, Look, looking at the Spider Man pictures yes. and the naked lady <laughs> building contraptions and things. <laughs> Come here, doggo. Yeah. So um, Rod helped steal the horses because Harry was going to fire him when he took over the village, and yeah. Uh, so he made uh, low budget little finger upset, and so he helped them steal the horses. But then they they find them all except one. 
And they're drinking Midsummer Nectar India Pale Ale organic beer since 1989. Uh, 98. Nice label. It's got a little B on it. I guess the whole point of that is that it's artisanal beer, so there's not a lot of it around. So they so can it say it to the pub. The pub definitely ordered only a certain amount, and they must have given it to them because that's the only way to get it. They're like, you're the only place that sells it, like in all of Midsummer, because that would be crap. Like you can't go to Costin and buy it. It should be. You can't go to the grocery store and buy only it. Only two cases. We make that company very is small. Batches. They're not going to be in business for long no. if that's the only way they can distribute their beer. We're worried about artisanal brewers <laughs> in Midsummer. Yeah, <laughs> it's just not a sustainable business. The menu in the pub always makes me hungry. Oh. <laughs> Why just, don't we have a pub? I don't know. You know, it's like... Not that we could go to it. I, well, I know. So we find out that Serena had a fling with Butch when they were younger. She got pregnant. She told him that the baby died, but she actually put it up for adoption because Jasper made her or convinced her because Serena and Jasper were already engaged. Yep. They moved the wedding up so she wouldn't be showing when they got married. So Jasper is not bad at this point. Like he, he Oh, he's willing to marry her even though she's pregnant by somebody else. How nice is he? But then she has to give the baby up because he's not raising Butch's bastard child. That is where he crosses a line. And says we have to tell everybody the baby died. That's a line that he crosses too. Yeah. Yeah. So Serena has to not only give up a child, but then never speak of that child. Never speak of it again. How horrible that must be. Ugh. And she was the Harvest Queen of 1979. Something that is <laughs> dropped in at the very last moment. <laughs> that really, I mean, I, one of the criticisms of this episode is that it breaks the rules. Yeah. You know, as viewers, we don't get all the clues. We don't know everything that they know. And it's very late in the episode when we find out this motive. So then you're like, okay, so there's a baby out there who would be about this old. Which of these characters is it? Because obviously that's the motive. And all you do is have at the beginning a scene where what's her name? The daughter is like, I'm going to be Harvest Queen, just like mom. And Jasper gets all humphy about it. Like, and that plants the seed. Yeah. Of the baby. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. We both went silent like, did you really just say what you had? I think you said you did. Oh my gosh. How do we forget? Ugh. We've talked about the Nevins. We've talked about Butch. We haven't talked about uh, Trina. Okay. So his Trina, wife, Trina, who she seems familiar to me. I looked in her IMDb page. IMDb page. There's nothing other than than coronation street which i watched a lot in the 80s yeah i don't think she was on it then she kind of looks like a lot of other actresses too there's actresses that age yeah. blonde you know but so i like her i like that she's actress. a great character and then sarah destroyed my vision of her <laughs> <laughs> her name is michelle holmes yeah oh she made a mistake Oof. um in 1990 she and another actress formed a band called the Dunky Daubers. Oh. We're going to link to this. This is also like hideously out of date in 1990. There's just the two of them. Yep. In the one existing video of their number one song. Now, number one meaning not that it topped the charts. It was their top song. Yes. I think it was. I don't think they were ever on top of the pops. I think it was their only song. Yeah, that's probably. There might have been an album behind it that is not spoken of. Yep. Again, they're called the Dunky Daubers. Somebody worked on this record. Two women dressed in tutus, bustiers, and bike shorts and baseball hats. (laughs) We're not making this up. Yes. Bike shorts, bustiers, tutus, and baseball hats. Singing a song uh, called I Call the Shots. Now, you're going to have to listen to this. You're going to have to watch the video. I highly recommend that you skip ahead about a minute and a half at least because there is a good minute and a half of them just swaying to the music, waiting to start singing Yes, while they're lip syncing. Could, could this possibly be a parody? I don't think so. I think they were actually trying to have music careers. And to their credit, they're both fairly good singers, but they were doomed because this song, whoo, I'm sorry, Michelle Holmes, you're a great actress. You were awesome in this episode. I'm sure you're very, very talented and lots and lots of things. This was a mistake. Yeah. 
I now read to you dramatically from the lyrics of I Call the Shots, which I only have because I watched the video enough to write them down. Oh, the video is horrific. They'll be in the show notes. And really... This may be the worst video we've ever shown in the show notes. You really have to watch it. Yeah. I saw you strutting, but you don't look like nothing that I'd let get close to me. So and it's kind of like Chav before Chav. <laughs> I ain't your lady, so don't call me baby. I think you're barking up the wrong tree because I'm in charge. The villain at large for everyone to see. I, 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 I call the shots around here. Yep. Woo woo. Woo woo. Now, the the, uh, the line that I'm uh, most in love with here. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. You know, I really hate when a man's ambition is to mate it with every girl he happens to see. It could okay. be make it, but it looks like mate it when okay. you watch your mouth. But the next line. You've watched this far too close. But I ain't so easy and you're far too sleazy to ever get laundry with me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It might be, it looks like laundry. It sounds like laundry. I'm going to guess I'm wrong about that word. Uh, <laughs> being in the clutch is just far too much to ask of a girl who wants to be free. Because I'm in charge, the villain at large, and I belong to me. Then there is a mysterious rap break. Yep. When one of the girls is clearly going She's to rap. about to start to rap. And the clip just stops. Stops. And comes back after the rap break. With more E I E I O S. <laughs> it's like somebody edited it to spare the world the rap break in this song. <laughs> and I have to tell you, there is something up with this song. Okay. <laughs> They're not on Spotify. No. There's no Wikipedia page for them. No. Something is up with this. There were, okay. Do you think Let's, they hired a company to like bury it? They must. How many have. views does the Dunky Dobbers "I Call the Shots" song have on on uh, YouTube? I don't know. Let me the see. link is right below her name in my show notes. I don't have them up. So Dunky Dobbers. What the hell is Dunky Dobbers anyway? That was their first mistake. They're two beautiful young blonde women who can sing. They could have been anything. Yeah. Somebody's gonna know. Somebody listening is gonna go. Oh, let me tell you about the Dunky Dobbers. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Just do me a favor. There's some, <laughs> there's also some record company. Okay. This is two actresses. Yes. Okay. There had to be an engineer. Yes. There had to be a producer. Yes. So that's four people who Somebody know about wrote this. this song. Somebody wrote this song. Somebody played the instrumentals for it. Somebody, though there's not a lot of real instruments we're in the like, music. We're at half a dozen people. At now. least. Now, this is from a television show. I don't know which television show. So there's all those people. Mm -hmm. More people know this is a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you play the video, will the audio get recorded? Uh, I don't. I, I think it will. Yes. Just jump to like 2.15. Okay, okay. It's sad that I know the timestamps because I've watched this video that many times. Okay, but we have to be careful here. Okay. Actually, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to play the audio. Okay. Because we might get tagged if we play a little bit of the audio. Really? It, yeah, it happens all the time. If you play any recorded music, you can get tagged out. Even if it's only like five seconds? Even if it's five seconds. Of that? Yep. <laughs> Who's arguing to protect that? I'm scared to talk about it now. Somebody's <laughs> going to show up at the door. <laughs> You've been speaking about the donkey dollars. <laughs> Michelle Holmes has like a secret army to repress any mention of the donkey dollars. This has 1,700 views on YouTube, which is what you originally asked. And how yeah. long has the video been posted? 1,700 over how many? How long? It's been there since the 3rd of December, 2019. Who on earth said, <laughs> certainly there's no global pandemic coming. Let's post this video. Oh my gosh. We should contact the person who oh, posted it and go, gosh. okay, where did you get it? Why did you post it? <laughs> it is Orson the Magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. And he's, he's on the train. Okay. The Donkey Dobbers is Sue Davini and Michelle Holmes. Some people probably thought it was a gag, but this video proves the Donkey Dobbers were real. <laughs> if there's a conspiracy about the Donkey Dobbers. <laughs> this, this YouTube page is a cold mind. 
Oh my god. Okay. Okay. There'll be more on Dunky Dobbers <laughs> next episode. <laughs> We'll have an update about Dunky Dobbers. <laughs> they do say the villain, they're the villain at large. So. Oh, uh, wow. Meanwhile, uh, Rowena, who is Amy's childminder, which is, I just love that term. Here we just call him babysitter or yep. nanny. Yep. Um, her childminder has kind of kidnapped Amy kind so that kid- Jessica can see her. B plot is I can't annoying. believe that Jessica literally has not talked to her daughter in like two years. When they live in the same village. It's just yeah. cruel. Yeah. But that's Jasper. I blame him for all of it. Yeah. I'm Jas- telling you. Jasper's the problem. You find out Niall's adopted. He's got Serena and Butch at the pub. Yeah. He's going to kill him with a fire iron. It's going to poke at them? Gonna What's poke, it? poke, poke at him. I think he could kill Butch that way because Butch is tied up and couldn't defend himself. Poor Butch. But I think Serena probably could have just shoved it out of his hand and like hit him. So Barnaby comes in and does one of his I'll talk you down things here. Great. And one of the things he says, he says, no one is to blame. And then he lists off a bunch of people. All of those people are to blame. Jasper is the most to blame. Jasper is the most to blame. Sorry, but he is. Yeah. Butch didn't even know. Butch Butch is completely blameless in the whole murder. We plot. haven't mentioned the most important bit here. <laughs> that it's not that Niall's mad because he was adopted. Niall is mad because he and his wife, Jerry, had a daughter who had a kidney condition, uh, cancer, yep. needed a donor, they went through the adoption agency to try to find his parents. You know Butch would have given his kidney right away. Absolutely. Instantaneously. Jasper and Serena ignored the letter. Jasper ignored the letter. It's really Jasper. It's Jasper. He talked her into ignoring but he it. But kept it. Kept it, yeah. Why In a cabinet under it? the stairs or I, something? I guess Harry Potter's in one door and the... <laughs> old male is in another door. And since Butch's name wasn't on the birth certificate... The letter requested that they contact the father to ask him to be matched. Yeah. And they never did that. So Butch didn't even know. No, Butch had no idea. So meanwhile, Niall and Jerry's daughter dies because they can't find a donor. Jasper's evil. So he kills Jasper and Serena's son. So that they know what it feels like. Butch and Trina's son to show them what it's like to lose a child. Yep. He kills Clara because Clara is the one who told him all of this. And she figured it all out. Well, she was there. Yeah. She was their best friend. Yep. So she knew about the baby, knew that it hadn't died. Yeah. And for some reason decided to tell Niall, maybe to get back at Jasper and Serena. Maybe. Because of what they were doing to Jessica. Clara and Serena Into the horse hot tub veterinarian. (laughs) Clara and Serena seem good with each other. Yeah. I mean, they're they're friends. They are like good friends. But the fact that Serena won't stand up to to Jasper, I think probably got Clara upset. Yeah. And so she just told Niall everything. But I don't think Clara knew about the ramifications of them not responding to the letter. No, I don't think so. Clara seemed a good enough person to me. And if nothing else, as a medical professional, I would think she would have said, a child is going to die if you guys don't do something. Absolutely. And I'm going to say something because this... This needs to get resolved. She would have said something. But do you, how long ago do you think Niall and Jerry's daughter died before the episode? Maybe 10 years? Because then they have, like, how does he get to the village and buy the pub and then figure it all? Like, it's a huge coinky dink. By the way, my notes have coinky dink in it <laughs> a couple of times. Unless Clara sought him out to tell him. Maybe. And, and then, then he knew. And then they decide to buy a pub in that village wait a few years and then he snaps i don't think so i don't well, I, I don't guess understand it's because that. butch comes back but he comes back every year yeah there so are, i don't know what the timeline yeah, is there there's, like there's problems with inciting incident and timeline like what made niall finally snap because yeah. my impression is their daughter died before they bought the pub yep and that could have been two years ago 10 years ago. I don't think it was Something. that long. I think it was a couple of years because they're trying to kind of pull themselves back together emotionally, running yep. the pub and everything. And Jerry thinks that maybe they can have another baby. Maybe because she was going to sell the pub to the son. To Harry. That's the inciting incident. Yeah, but he doesn't know that until during the episode and he's already killed Harry when he finds yeah. that out. 
maybe. I don't, maybe maybe the listeners can put that together, put those puzzle pieces together in a way that makes a bit more sense. But I have trouble with the chronology there. I don't I don't understand it. Let's go to the carnival. Sykes isn't happy. Those are my two last notes. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to go to Torquay. The yeah. Barnabies are going to go to Torquay in a rented VW bus. Yeah. Which the VW bus is awesome. But they put Betty in the front seat. Okay, the last note I have is that is not where the child goes. <laughs> she and Tom should both be in the back. Yeah. She should be in, her car seat should be in the back. Yeah. But anyway, I'm glad Sykes gets to go on vacation instead of to the kennel. Yeah. Where he would undoubtedly escape. Again. Again. But he gets to leave the show. Mom, mom, I got a part. I'm going to stand in the background while they interview these people. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. No, no. Mom, mom, I got a part. I'm a solicitor in this episode. No lines for either solicitor. There very episode. rarely are. Yep. I really like Rod's solicitor yep. because he has, he has a pinstripe suit on. Yes, he does. He has a little leather bound book yep. with a red ribbon in it um, that he keeps closed until Rod starts talking about some stuff. And then he's like... I should write this down. Yep. He doesn't he, say anything. He oh no, but that's he, he acts with his body. Yes. Right? There is a rich tapestry of thought and emotion across this Rod, actor's who face. Is the stupidest person. I did this and I did this and I did this. Well, who'd you do it with? Oh, no comment. They're gonna figure that out. There's only twelve people. Why would you not tell them you you have no chips to bargain with? No, then. no. But so this this uh, this actor playing his solicitor has this nice pinstripe suit on. He has this nice little leather bound journal, and then pulls out one of those clear bic pens. Yeah. with the blue ink. Yep. Um, to, I noticed that. to write in it. Yeah, and he starts writing on the left hand page first, which just makes me mad. Oh. <laughs> like, okay, I was with you. I was with you, background actor. I was rooting for you in your pinstripe suit. And then you did that and you're out. You're yeah. out. Sorry, you Mom, lose. Mom, I'm not going to get another Midsummer. I'm not going to be a solicitor again in this oh, show because I wrote on the I'm wrong really page. I'm really glad I didn't see that. And I didn't bring a good pen with me. They probably made him bring his own suit. If though. I accidentally do that, I erase it. <laughs> you probably tear the page out and burn it. You probably scrap the notebook and start over no. again. You're that uptight about not. your list. Yes, you are. <laughs> Not that one. I love you and it works for you. Yep. But yeah, you would. List the work and work the list, folks. You ready for the best corpse? Best corpse. <laughs> nice corpse. We've got Harry, Clara, and Dale to choose from. Harry I hate because of the fake blood. It's really painfully fake. Okay. Is it just too red for you? Yeah. Okay. I like Clara, but... <laughs> I got to give it to Dale. The suddenness of Dale's impalement. <laughs> like. It's sudden impalement. You, it, There's screaming. They run. There's Dale. Big pole. Broad daylight. Done. They're out. We never see his body again. I think again. Dale's a uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> you think he just like spelunked on a rope, like Mission Impossible style down the middle of the wall of death? And just spun around to get to speed with the motorcycle yep. and then just like, <laughs> boom. Now that would work. If he was suspended and he stabbed him, he would swing out of the way from the impact. But he would also have to nothing to force against. That's true. He wouldn't have any, uh, yeah, he wouldn't have any leverage. Leverage. No. <laughs> We've thought mm. about this way more than the people who wrote or acted in this. Okay, uh, but... That's what maniacs do. You man. maniacs who are out there, how would you have done it? Yeah. You want you need to impale Dale. How do you get it done? Yeah. You know, whoa, wait a minute. We've assumed Dale was on a motorcycle. What if he wasn't? Okay. What if Niall had the pole, jumped from the balcony, and landed on him, driving the pole into him? How does he get out and in broad daylight with blood all over him? While running a pub into the ground. The question is more about how does he get into the wall of death with the pole? Yeah. Which would have had to be pointy. He should take tips from Midsummer, uh, uh, the folk song episode. It's yeah. not Midsummer Rhapsody, but it's the other one. With the umbrella. With the umbrella. Yeah. Because, you know, that works. The Ballad of Midsummer. Yes. After the credits. Okay. 
Jasper's still a jerk. Jasper is the biggest jerk, and he gets away with everything. Yeah, he just goes back to being her, him. I hope Serena divorces him or does something. <sighs> I, I, her best friend is dead. Her child is dead. Yeah. I, I hope that Serena and Jessica move into the big house together, kick him out, and they raise Amy and yeah. have lots of fun together. Yeah. I, I could not believe that Serena confronts Jasper about Clara's death in front of Amy. Did you kill her other grandmother? Like, yeah. she's right there. Yeah. She's on a horse. She's not deaf. Yeah. She's like six. Yeah. She's old enough to understand. Did you kill your other grandmother? I mean, that's what she's asking him. Yep. Do you that's... know about her other grandmother's death? Did yeah. you do it? Yeah. Amy is, is one screwed up child. Boy, she's going to have some stuff to unpack later with the yes. therapist. So hopefully Jessica and Serena get along better and they both care for Amy and, and take care of her. Yes. Do you think Rod is going to jail for the horses? Yes. And assuming Dale had some other buddies who were helping him. Yeah. They should, they should go to jail too. Yeah. Because now the stables is going to be in trouble. Yeah. So Jerry may or may not have a job. Because the stables may go out of business. Yep. Because and she's lost horse, her boyfriend. Her husband. Because Butch is not going to hang out with her. No. Anymore. Yeah, you're right. I think I think Butch and Trina are fine. Yeah, I think. I so. think they'll work it out, and I think Sean and Beth will not will be to together. belittle Butch, but I don't think this is a brand new thing, and I think Trina has come to terms with it. Yes, I think I think you're right about that. Unfortunately, but I think you're right. Niall's definitely going to jail. Yes. Uh, what did Beth and Sean get together? Romeo and Juliet? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so too. But what about Rowena? What about Niall's wife? Is she going to stay on and run the pub? They're not making a lot of money. No, she's out of there. I think she's going to just sell up and go. Well, Who she can she sell no... it to? She can't sell it to Harry anymore. She is. Well, I think Beth takes over the family business and takes care of things. Yeah. Cause Beth is too young. She has no reason to stay. No. None at all. None. And she already wanted to get out of there. That's true. They, she wanted them to sell already. Yep. This is the little girl who plays Amy. Her name is Nikita Essex. This is her only acting credit. Oh, she so, does a good job. Yeah. She can sit on a horse and sit on a swing. Yeah, she does a lot of sitting. Way to go. I wonder if there's trampoline shots. <laughs> they got cut. We got <laughs> we to gotta cut the trampoline in post. <laughs> There's there's a scene of Amy and Betty hand in hand, you know, walking along a tightrope or <laughs> playing with knives or something. <laughs> the unsupervised children who do what they want. Yep. <laughs> oh, well, that is Harvest of Souls. It's our so, last Nelson and our last Sykes. Yes. This comes out on Monday, the 3rd of January. The 5th of January, we have a newsletter come out. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, which is newsletter number five. We should have regular episodes this entire month. Yeah. Our next one will be episode 111. That's so weird to say. <laughs> and we're starting season, season 19, 19. Episode one, The Village That Rose From The Dead, which is an exciting title for a not so exciting episode. Oh, I don't know. People get run over by tanks. But it's not undeady. <laughs> no, there's no zombies. Yes. But villages that were uh, taken over by the military for military purposes is that's very interesting. interesting. Yeah, There's some that's, interesting stuff there. There's some interesting stuff there. Other than that, uh, buy some merchandise. Remember, we are on Instagram, Twitter, and email, and the Facebook groups for Midsummer and Acorn and the subreddit. If you're watching on YouTube, remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell. And we'll leave you with a couple of tasks. Yeah. If you can figure out how Dale was murdered, yes. let us know. How Please. would you how would you have killed him? Please. And if you know anything about the Dunky Daubers. Dunky Daubers. I want to call them the Dauber Dunkers. No. Dobby Dunkers, which is something completely different. That Dun poor house elf did not deserve yeah. that. Dunky Daubers. <laughs> the Dunky Daubers. Or if you find that URL that's on the motorcycle. Yep. That, Those uh, three that Dutch URL. Let yep. us know. Yep. Until next time. Bye, maniacs. Bye, maniacs. The children can never find these tapes. <laughs>